and I know that Zhu was a possible opponent for, for Terrence, but obviously yeah. that's not happening. I mean, it must be frustrating for him because he's at the peak of his, like, you know, he's there. Everybody wants to see him uh, fight again, but there's nobody really there that makes sense. If that, or, you know yeah, what I mean? It's like, like the boxing world is crazy, dude. It's so unforgiving because it's like the same people who was rooting against him. Now they talk about, yeah, I like Terrence, man, <laughs> but I want to see him. And then they jump in on, like, the boots in his, you know, you know, train. Because you know, he did the suspense, and, you know, if they don't have an excuse, they just jump on that train. And the, the boots. Dennis, I mean, I, I think is he's still on the same mind frame. Like, th th there's levels, and he's just not at the level yet where where he's you know that warrants a fight. With yeah, boots. I mean, I like honestly, we never had that conversation. Like, oh. hey, um, would you fight Boots? Um, like, man, because it's like I mean, I've heard in the past where you know the where they sent them offers and it was denied and stuff like that, but. Now the ball's in Buzz court, so it's like he could do what he want. He could say no. He could say yeah, and be like, people be talking about the ducking. All right, dude, like yeah, that's cool. He ain't, never, he ain't never ducked a person. He ain't he'll fight whatever, spar, fight. It don't matter. Like that's just that's just him. That's his nature. Yeah, yeah. But yeah that's... Man, it's a way to go about business. And there's also, you know, a pride thing behind it too, because a person, a person that's competitive is very prideful too. And it's like if you sent you offers and it was denied and stuff, no matter what platform it was and stuff like that, you was able to fight. Like right. you, bottom, you, you, you could have fought if you wanted right. to. Um, then I'm like, shoot, like why well, I'm gonna keep on giving you these shots and I didn't get you shots, so, like whatever. You, you know, you're that boots denied. A fight with Terrence in the past? Yeah, I mean, I, that's what I've heard. You know, I've I've heard about it, but you know, I'm not sure. Like, you know, what I mean, mm -hmm. anything uh, you can hear somebody say this and hear that, but you know, I'm not sitting behind the table negotiating these, right. these things. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't blame. Hey, bro, let me see the contract. Hey, let me see. Right. The like, no, nah, just just talk. It's, just it's talk. It must be frustrating because I know that the, the Canelo fight was something that came up, but Canelo is kind of on that. Like, I don't want to fight a smaller guy who's who's really talented because it's a lot of risk and very little reward for me. That's that's some bull crap because it's like, <laughs> what what fight would be bigger? This this tell me a fight that be that he. Possibly bigger than him and Terrence fighting. No matter what people say, who who they're leaning on, that fight will be one of the biggest fights in most of Warren. That'd be close to him fighting Mayweather. You're right. Right. It would fighting. be a big fight. I guess. I guess he just the risk since Terrence is technically smaller. Maybe is, is well, what's the stopping. Risk, though, he he has lost before. True. Twice. You know what I mean? I mean he's. It's not like he's he finds somebody that's not going to bring the money to the table because anybody who remotely likes boxing is going to tune into it. Right, of course. So it's like there's nothing out of it besides I just don't want to fight because I don't want to, you know, tame my record or lose. You know, if you really confidently feel you can beat him, being smarter or not, like you did it with Charlo. Was different with him fighting Amir Khan you know, too. Charlo, Amir Khan, yeah. like all these guys. Like, but now when it comes to Terrence, like, why don't you want to? Fight? Yeah, I mean that that's what he's kind of said. But you like you you never know. I guess I, is that the fight you think that that Bud wants the most? Um, I won't speak for him, but I feel like yeah. I mean, it's a no brainer. Like. Win, lose, or draw. Like, who wouldn't want that fight? You know? Yeah, because that's that. Especially, you know, for Terrence, because it's besides the money, which obviously that's the biggest pity you can get. There's the the, the legacy build on that yeah. because now you're going to get yeah. undisputed, right? And it's not like I'm saying, oh, Bud is get to fight this for money, like, cause no, nah, like Bud gets that fight for the legacy. 
Mm-hmm. Like being able to be a guy that move over three weight classes and beat this guy. Like it's never, mm-hmm. it's never been, it's never been done. It's never been, you know what I mean? It's never been done. You know, people have moved up two weight classes. So it's like, if he fight at 54, it'll kind of ruin that legacy. If he go and fight somebody at 54, then he move over and fight Wait, so Canelo. And nobody's like, gone, you're saying nobody's gone three weight classes? No, in one, like I, I mean, I, I can't think about in history that ever went up three week classes and beat somebody. Uh, Roy Jones went from middle to heavy. Yeah. But was it like in one fight though? Was it like no? In oh, literally okay. One fight? okay, I get you. I get you. No, it wasn't. Yeah, it was yeah. gradual. That's why I'm explaining. Like, if Bud goes up to 54 and fights somebody and then fight Canelo, it will ruin that kind of legacy I piece right here, that that historical piece because he's going from. You know, fifty four, skipping. You know, right. 60, and then sixty eight. But he going forty seven. He's skipping. He's fifty four, sixty, and on sixty eight, and then winning. Like interesting. That's, so, that's interesting. Yeah. So that's something he's aware of, huh? That that would be like a that would be like a, a record breaking. Exactly. Hmm. Record breaking. Hmm. And then for the third weight class, like undisputed, like yeah, you know, it's a possibility you can do that, like. Yeah, Who I mean, that? Yeah, no. that? yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's funny because you remember at first he was like, nah, I'm not doing that. Maybe at a catch weight. And then literally like a couple of days later, he was like, I, I thought about it. I, I think I can do this. Yeah, I I, I I'm do pretty, pretty sure he sit there and thought about it. I was like, you know what? Yeah. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. yeah, like, I mean, you know, I fight, I fight, 16. I tell people like, Never mind all that stuff. They talk about size, man. That's certain people. That's why it's called pound for pound. So, certain people that does not matter. It does not matter. Whatever weight they can put on is the weight that they can fight at, and they can be successful at that weight. I guess, like, so I, I feel like with that fight, the two main challenges for for Bud would be: can he hurt Canelo? Because I know Bud hits really hard, but Canelo is absorbs. You know, like he seems like he has a really good chin, so. Do you think that Bud would be able to drop him, like, significantly hurt Canelo? Yeah, because it's not about, like, a lot of times it's not about that one punch that is going to end the fight. It's not about that. Like, like, Like I was saying, if you stand there and you let me throw rocks at your head and your forehead over and over and over and over and over and over, that one little pebble ain't gonna hurt, but over time you're gonna be like, man, dang, you gonna you gonna tap out. Right. Right. Man, I can't take it more. And that's what it is like me being like one of Buzz's main spar partners, you know, since I've always boxed, I'll fight sixty eight, seventy five. Uh-huh. That's been the thing. It's like I wanna go in there and try to like sit down, but by the time I'm trying to throw them them big shots. He's already coming back with one, two, or counter, boom, and hit you in them key spots. You're like, man, this dude's like a, like a, like a oracle. Like it's crazy that he know where to hit you. Boom, boom. Like, dang, man, you get mad, you get frustrated, and you start swinging more, more hard than he's constantly doing it. You know, but um, interesting. So yes, yeah, so it's the accumulation, the chop the tree down. Yep, exactly. Uh, and then okay. knowing, knowing how to punch, knowing how to punch. Right. Just knowing how to. Okay. Me and him argue at the time. I mean, he probably he probably see this and be like, man, he counter what I'm saying. But I feel like if we had like a punch bag and we measure like pounds per punch, you know, mm-hmm. I feel like you like, man, I punch harder than you. I know you don't. I feel like I can punch harder than him. Mm-hmm. But it's the way he punched, like his snap, the way he can snap his punches, the way he can, you know, throw the way he turned them over. It's a different effect. Mm. Yeah, he, he shows. He throws very short punches. You yeah. Know, real short and yeah. and in this watch you don't see it. Like it took me forever every time. Like even still to this day, I see him sparring and I forget about being in there with him. You know, uh-huh. I'm like, man, I'm going here, I'm about to just do what I want, do what I want. And then you get in there, it's a different story. Mm-hmm. It's a it's a whole different story once you get in there. So people see him fight and they're like, Man, you don't punch out, I don't you know, I don't do this, and they and they blow it off, and then that, and they get in them fights. That's what everybody, everybody he fought that was a bigger puncher. That everybody talked about it was gonna hurt him and all that stuff. He get in there and they be like, "Dang!" Like 
even the press, the the post fight press conference, they always say, "Man, that dude can punch." I didn't think he mm -hmm. could hit like that. Mm -hmm. Well, so I guess the second part of the Canelo fight, which you can answer because, you know, you've been in there with him, is, okay, can can he take the punches from a, a, a strong puncher that's a natural 68, 75-pounder? Yeah. But that's not it, though. Canelo, he probably walks around at 68. That's a good point. point. Yeah. You know what I mean? He probably walks around that way. So he just go to go to fights, don't have to cut no weight and stuff like that. Canelo's not a big frame guy. Now it's different if Bud try to challenge Benavidez. Or like better be Yeah, better be you know, you know what I mean? And then they'd be like, hey bro, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> I, I I think yeah. you bro just calm down a little bit. But you know what I mean? But I feel like like real shit, I feel like he going there and, and do it, but it's just more of a a bigger guy fight. And a little guy, but Canelo is just an, a, a guy who just fought at a lower weight class where he was cutting weight, and now he's just fighting at his walk around weight, right? Which I feel like do the same, right? Right. Um, you think you think the Errol Spence fight is not happening? I, I don't know. No idea. Would you, do you want to see it? Who who will want to see it besides somebody that's I, that, I don't. Fan but fan. some right, some people do. I don't want to see it, but some people do. Yeah, see, I don't know, cause like literally, like I say, like Bud's been traveling a lot. You know, he's been he hasn't been in Omaha a lot. He's been traveling. He's been doing his thing, in and out. He come a day, be back a day, be gone. He's he living that life. So I haven't really sat down and got to you know have a conversation with him about our next move and stuff like that. But um, right, right. So it, I mean, I just don't. I I literally don't know. I'm on the same. I'm, I'm on the same stance as everybody else that's waiting to see what he does next. I it, don't know. But it was it was, it was interesting. You know, I'm sure you saw arrows. You know, my eye. That's why I was getting hit. He was saying it, coming out. Yeah, it's, 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 it's gonna always be an excuse. But as a fighter, we all know as fight like you're a mm -hmm. fighter, and this is for the fans. There has never been a fight I've been to. Been a hundred percent. That's true. That's true. Never. There's always something. It's yep. Always something. It's always wrong. But that's what that's what separates that's what separates a good fighter and a great fighter. Just like you think about Michael Jordan. Right. One of his best games was the flu game. That's true. Because he was sick and he was still, still out there and dominated, pushing himself. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's what makes you great. Like, no matter what happens, no matter what's going on in your life, mentally, physically, spiritually, you still go out there and you got a, you got a, you got a, a mission that you got to complete. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's no like, if, if, if Errol had all those issues, and I mean, I'll be honest, to me, he did seem like he was a little off. I don't think it would have made a difference in the outcome of the fight. Don't get yeah. me wrong. But don't take the fight. Postponed exactly. if, 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 you know. but 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 it's like if he would have won, nobody would have said, Oh man, he won and he went all the way there. I could see it. He was just that no, nobody would say that, yeah. but now because he lost, people are saying him not being there and stuff like that. Of course, man, we can always look back in hindsight at situation and be like, Well, I did see something just because you're looking for it now, mm -hmm. you're looking for it excuse if it was so much of a problem he didn't have a problem pulling out from the pacquiao fight when his eye was messed up that's true that's true when the pacquiao fight the reason why it didn't happen because he pulled out and then Ugi stepped right in. yeah the, the detached right now it yeah. was no problem then but now all of a sudden it's an excuse like no like let's 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 play it fair both ways right you know i'm not here to speak for bud but I can I can bet my last dollar that Bud wasn't hundred percent for the fight either. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's always something going on. Yeah, for sure. But but you would never hear it being an excuse. Yeah, you didn't hear yeah. Bud come out and say, "Man, I won that fight, but man, I was blah 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 blah." Yeah, yeah. you was going on about your business because. If it was something wrong with you, you shouldn't fight. If it were, if it wasn't enough for you, go, man. We 
to be in camp, like, help each other. Like, man, yours hurt too, man. Me too, man. <laughs> like, I said, like, I don't like to speak too much about because I don't, you know, I don't know what he want to put out there, but sure. it's just always something. Sure. Right here, there's always something, man. And I'm not guessing. I'm not saying it might have been. I know for a fact. You knew he had some, some yeah. shit wrong, too. It's not up to me to put whatever he wanted to put out because we're not using shit as an excuse. If it's, if it's that much of a problem, we're going to not take a fight. We're going we gonna to retire. We're going to, you know what I mean? I got issues with me that I'm like, fuck that, I'm going to keep fighting. Otherwise, I'm going to retire. Mm-hmm. Here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, that, that that's true. Um, it, it was yeah, everybody strange. using excuses. Using excuses. I've been seeing people use excuses that are mainly problems that he made up himself. Like, like wait, like that's mm-hmm. that's a personal issue. You got nutrition issue. Be careful what you do when you get out of camp. I mean, when you get out of a, a, a fight and stuff like that, you can't just go back to Texas and and eat a half a horse and half a cow and, <laughs> and then want to come back and fight and perform for you. I mean, you can't party and drink and go travel and then drive home and, and get in a wreck. Everybody, oh, man, he got in a wreck. Duh, duh, duh. That's what happens when you drink and you drive. I think, I think the only reason why some people might be entertaining some of those excuses a little is because it was such a one-sided fight. Like, they'd never seen Arrow be dominated like that. Yeah. So some- that's the only reason why I think it's even being entertained. Yeah, but now the thing about it is his performance is showing that, you know, people always talk about Bud's resume, you know. Bud Bud resume is filled with a bunch of um people who were ranked high, who were up and coming just like him that he had to face because they were mandatories. You know, okay. It's probably only like one or two fights that he picked. He picked over a mandatory, which is like a mere con. That was a big money right. fight, you know. Everybody knew Bud was going to win, but all the rest of the fights, it was all because he had to unify. They were number one. He was number two, or you know, vice versa. He was number one. They were number two, number three, or the two, three, four wasn't available, so he had to pick five. This it's like when he fought um oh boy back in December um uh, um. Oh. And Abbott Neeson. Oh, right. That guy was ranked number five, you know, mm-hmm. and he and he went down the list. It's like, we started at two, started at three, three. they say no, four, okay, he had a fight coming up. What's the next step? Let's get five. Right. It wasn't because oh, I, want to, I want to pick this guy because he, no, nah, no, nah, we don't do right. that. Right. Everybody's picked, but now it's showing them that those guys that Bud was having, you know, a good fight with, you know, were on the same level as Errol Spence, but he was just a more popular. Being free yeah. and fighting the guys he fought, he was just more popular. Mm-hmm. Don't make I mm-hmm. mean he was a better fighter, right. or right. these guys weren't weren't nobody. He was fighting nobody, right? Because all guys was some they past Olympians, past champions, current champions, you know. But they just they had that big name, right? Right. Yeah. It's it's a. Uh, I guess when when you know if, when I look at it from Errol's perspective, you know undefeated, dominating, you know, stopping people, breaking orbital bones. And so when he finally loses, and you know, as a fighter too, it, you know, sometimes it's a little hard to have your brain accept, oh shit, you know, oh, oh shit, uh, I lost. And then slowly over time, because he didn't say anything at first. And then as of late, there was these, you know, the surgery, the, the rib, there was a whole bunch of things coming out that he didn't yeah. say at all. Yeah, it was better just to be quiet. Because at first, everybody gained respect. Yeah, a lot of people getting respect because you know he took his loss like a man. He wasn't saying nothing. He just dissing himself. Yep. And he came back like you know what? Like I lost the last fight. The guy was a better fighter, but I, I want mine back. Right. Right. Leave it right there. Don't take away from this man's legacy and then put because fans are followers at the end of the day and they're gonna they're gonna go with whatever narrative That's you put true. out. So now the fans are like, if. He would have did that. A lot of fans who were speaking and making excuses for, for, for Errol Spence would be like, yeah, all right, champ, we riding with you. Now a lot of people are like, man, they lost respect because it's like, dude, like, why are you why are you making an excuse months later, six months later, talking about, uh, can't talk to you. That's why I was getting caught with left and right or hooks. Yeah, you was getting caught with rights and uppercuts and <laughs> the movement was throwing you off, all that. But 
Yeah. What is that? It was that. It was he also talked about his rib, and then uh, oh, I, and saying something like he's never f lived the fighter's lifestyle, so he's surprised he didn't lose earlier. You're saying stuff like that. And then you, and then you, and then it, it starts to, it starts to. Then you gotta start legally thinking. I mean, you gotta start thinking too. Like now, it's gonna put a shame on the commission and the doctors now because if you saying these are your issues and you still fought, like why didn't they clear you? Right. right. How did they clear you? How did they clear you to to to? If it was something truly wrong with your eyes, how did you get clear? Because we know that I hate it. But I know it's part of part of the thing going to get checked by the doctor. Your eyes mm -hmm. gotta be dilated. I gotta take that whole day, it, especially a sparring day. I can't spar because I can't because my eyes is dilated. Like I hate that stuff. Or going every fight and going and get tested. They test your blood. They test your pee. They test you all up and down mm -hmm. and everything. Only thing they don't check is your prostate, but they check everything yeah. else. Like yeah, yeah. No, that's true. That's true. The, 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 it's so a, now it's like now it's out of your hands of an excuse. Now it's like, okay, dang, what's up with the commission? Like, what are they doing? Like, why didn't yeah. they let this dude fight? If yeah. it was truly yeah. an issue, though, if it was truly if it was truly a problem, like that's why I feel like it's just an so, excuse. So, cause like, so do you think that none of those things were wrong with him? Well, with the with the, with the, with the eyes and stuff. Yeah, with Arrow, like all the things that he had mentioned yeah, you think I mean, that I, was actually that's what I, say, I feel like it's an excuse because if it was an issue like why, why did you take the fight and why did they clear you those are two things that that's my concern mm -hmm. yeah. yeah so did, did you think that he looked a little off like a lot of people say he looked like he was high in his face and all, and all that I don't. I ain't paid much attention to it, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Look at right. look at the past fights, and like I said, if he was one, it would never would have been an excuse. Right. Right. No, that's people, true. Yeah, people can sit up and talk about how he looked, but I said that's in hindsight. It's just like if you're in a relationship and, and your mate is cheating on you, and then you find out. He like, man, I knew it. I knew. Well, if you knew it, then why did you continue to be with this person? Then you knew this whole time, like, right? You're you're looking in hindsight. True. Like after the issue come up, you be like, oh, it makes sense now to everything you ignored, and then it start making sense. You be like, no, you just, you know what I mean? Like, right, right, right. No, I get it. I get it. It's just, uh, it was. Kind of unexpected, but like it, there's a lot of that lately that goes on, especially now. I think with social media, we hear a lot more, you know, because the word can get around so much more quickly and people could put it out easily. Exactly. So I guess that that's that's, that, that's what happens. But I don't know, man. You know, we'll, we'll see what happens. Hopefully, hopefully he gets that. You know, I was talking about to some people about him being like, he doesn't really have any fights now because. Canelo, you know, like to do to achieve the goal that he wants, like it's just really Canelo, yeah, right? Yeah. Canelo, really, that's the fight. That's maybe the fight. Charlo, maybe the big. I don't know. The, no, uh, nah. The um, I want the big Charlo. You want him? I want the big Charlo. That you know what? That'd be dope if he fights little Charlo. I know, right? You fight <laughs> I said Charlo. that after after big Charlo. Last fight, I said, man, like, that'd be dope to have both brothers and then me and Bud on the car fighting them.